everybody. Thanks for joining us yet again here for our Rebound series. This is part four. My name is Caleb Rothy. I'm the Percussion Education Coordinator for WGI, and I am joined tonight by Eric Shriver from Gold Indoor Percussion and Tony Lyman from uh, Pedal High School. And so, gentlemen, uh, good evening. How are you both? Doing great. Surviving. <laughs> yeah, same. Just finished the weekend and already just getting ready for the next week. Just keeping the cycle going. Absolutely. Right. And that's the, the time of the season that we're in for sure. So I've really been looking forward to this recording uh, because since the last time we talked, both of your ensembles have had their debut performances this season. So uh, I want to catch up with both of you tonight and I want to hear all about those first performances. So Tony, I figured we'd start with you tonight. Um, talk to us about Pedal's first show. Give us a rundown of what that experience was like. Well, we left the school with all of the things that we were supposed to have. We found the gym. We got inside of the gym with all of the things that we were supposed to have. We had a very accurate representation of where we are right now, which I, I you know, I, I guess I would have been upset if we didn't, if we did worse than that or better than that. You know, you always want to know what, what's going to happen, but it was very accurate. Um, and we left the place with all of our things. And right now that is a hype. Um, you know, the, um, one moment that stuck out to me was I was watching a freshman tenor player. We were, you know, kind of waiting behind the, it wasn't really a curtain, but the, the ready area. Yeah. And we could see the group before us performing. And I saw a freshman tenor player watching the group and and I'm thinking to myself, this is the first time this person has seen this happen. And I just kind of watched him for a while just to just to see him take this in that I just had that, that perspective has escaped me because we've done this for so long mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the people who haven't done this are a smaller group of people in our in our ensemble and they look to the older experience members and they kind of you know look to see what to do this is the first time where the majority of the group has not done this before only five of our members have been to world championships before and um so that was a moment that that you know i don't think i'll ever forget that moment and I, you're so spot on with that because for all of us, we feel like we're getting back to this and we know what this is. And so day to day, week to week, we're in the trenches trying to make things happen. Go, okay, by this point in the season, this has to be happening. These kinds of performance metrics, we got to hit. Um, and so I'm so glad that you shared that because I think it's so easy for all of us as educators right now to get a little lost with the, here's where we need to be. Oh, we haven't made as much progress as we want. Ah, this is not as clean as we'd like it to be. Uh, and lose sight of the fact that for a bunch of our kids, they're they're experiencing this still for the very first time. And so I love that idea of the freshman tenor player. It's like, okay, you have a job to do. You've been rehearsing all of this, but you've never been to an in-person show before. And you're watching another ensemble perform live with all those butterflies about, I'm about to do this the for, for the first time myself as well. Um, and I'm so glad that you were able to like step back and kind of capture and remember that moment. Uh, and hopefully we can all do that in the days and the weeks ahead uh, as our ensembles are, are charting new ground, at least for a number of our performers that just haven't done this before the way that we are all used to as designers and educators. Yeah, so Tony, any other um, experiences from that first day that were kind of eye-opening or that, that maybe didn't go the way that you were expecting them to go? Or was everything pretty much straight ahead as you were anticipating? Ironically, that was the thing that shocked me the most was how normal the flow of things was. You know, um, everybody showed up on time. It, actually, it was kind of better than normal, you know, I, you know, and it may had something to do with, you know, this is our first time. We don't want to we don't want to cause any self-inflicted wounds or anything. Sure. Maybe that's what it was. But just the idea of them finally getting to see this, and I've told people it's like, I've been telling them, or we've been trying to, to give them as much of an idea of what they're about to experience, 
but it's almost like trying to explain to someone what a giraffe is if they've never seen one, you know, it's, it's such an unusual thing that, you know, you come off almost sounding crazy a little bit um, when you're ex explaining something so um, unique. And yeah, um, so, so in a, in a sense, I would say, you know, it, it, it shocked me how normal things were. That's great to hear. And I think that's what we've all been craving is just trying to get back to that sense of normalcy and really to get, you know, to get back into a groove with all of this that we love and, and hold so dear. Um, Tony, how about for your performers? How did they feel coming off the floor after their first performance, you know, in, in almost two years with a, a major layover, at least for this kind of activity? Um, excitement, nervous feelings still coming off the floor? How would you characterize that? I think it was like... Um the same feeling that you have um, when you've gotten off of a, a, a roller coaster. It's almost like there was this intense feeling of accomplishment laced with fear, laced with um, excitement of wanting to do it again. Um, you know, and we try to make the process as boring as possible as far as the procedural sides of it. Sure, sure. You know, because I don't want them to feel like they're rushed because, you know, that that winds up finding itself in the performance. So, you know, I, I may have overemphasized the boring side of it um, to the point where they just kind of look normal. I was like, I was like trying to give high fives. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we did the thing. I was like, right. well, okay. <laughs> So it, it was, um, it, it, I think it was good for me to, um, I think I was more nervous than them. I'll put it that way. And I think it was, they were less nervous because there was no expectation. I was more nervous because I had a reference. Yeah. And we bring a whole lot of emotional and psychological baggage in with this. Right. Uh, you know, right. There's a, they were like, we're just going to go do the thing we've been practicing. I was right. like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 right, right. Right, that's, right. that's the do. plan. Do that. Yeah, that's what, that's what I told you to do. <laughs> and Tony, lastly, how about for the parents of Petal High School? How did the first in-person performance go for them in quite some time? Also business as usual or anything interesting there? They were just so happy for the kids. They were taking pictures of unloading the truck and... <laughs> plugging in cables and I mean I think you could make a, a flip book movie out of the pictures that were taken and you could you get a whole film of what happened sure there was just so many pictures and video taken and normally I don't like for you know first show video to get out but I was like I, I don't post whatever <laughs> do whatever you know we are who we are right now you know so yeah, yeah it the parents were um very excited to be in a performance situ situation, just to see their kids out there um, and to see the result of all of this toil, you know, that we've kind of been putting them through that, that seemed endless and without any kind of payoff other than exhaustion. Yep, yep. Yeah, all stick and no carrot up until the first right. time we get out there on the floor. We got a carrot. Yep. Um, I love the idea of parents capturing the mundane about the first show, just everything. Mm -hmm. Photos of unloading the truck and, you know, putting a mallet in a bag and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it all feels special again. All the stuff that we took for granted. That, right. You know, I love the idea of we're chronicling all of these things to, you know, hopefully never take any one of those pieces for granted. All right. Eric, how about for you and Gold? And I know this was interesting. It was Gold has had now not only their first show, but it was at a WGI regional as well. Um, talk to us about that experience. Um, it's, it's a pretty daunting task to come out at a regional. And um, it, anybody who's aware of the SoCal scene, like just going into a WGI regional is um, it's tough. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on that. Um, for us, we just, I mean, I think we did a really good job about keeping the blinders on. Like it's all gold all day. Like we have to just focus on ourselves. Um, and it's, it's so easy to get wrapped up in competition and the other groups. Um, everybody's their own group at this point in the season and we're mm -hmm. all on a different level and we're all different points in the season and 
what we just need to focus on is ourselves. And I, th I think that was the biggest goal of that weekend is just figure out our process, beginning, to, like getting to the school and leaving the school and everything in between. Um, so that alone was a win, like just figuring out that whole process. It was great to have two reads back to back, uh, be able to do critique, talk with the judges, get a second performance. So that was great to be able to come out at the WJ regional, but once again, very, very, very stressful knowing going in. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, talk to us about the process a little bit. You said that that was one of the big things. As you went through the process of that first show day, getting into the school, getting into the show, all that kind of stuff, did everything go smoothly? Was there any, were there any bumps on the road along the way, or was it kind of what you were anticipating? Yeah, actually, for them, it went really smooth. Um, we, they were able to get to the school adequate time. Everybody... Everybody got there on schedule, if not earlier. The truck was there early enough. They unloaded the truck. They had the equipment out, ready to move to the lot like an hour earlier than they needed to. Like all the members were just on board and excited to do it. Um, so it was cool. They, they had time to chill and like prepare and get ready for the lot. Um, so that was, that was huge. And that was really important for us. Um, we didn't have a rehearsal the night before where traditionally like, in this type of setting, we would possibly do a Friday night rehearsal. Um, but because we couldn't secure facilities for that specific day, uh, we had a conflict. We just had no rehearsal. And because it's a WJ regional, it, the performance was too early in the day for us to do a rehearsal that morning. Mm -hmm. So the last time that we touched the show was Sunday afternoon the previous week. So six days prior. So uh, yeah, that's a long layover. And it, it was sure. a really long time. And uh, that was very kind of nerve wracking for everybody knowing that we left Sunday going, we might have a rehearsal on, on Friday or we might not. And if we don't, we have to be able to just show up to the regional cold and just make it happen. And, and they uh, did, I, right? They pulled they it did. off. Uh, the prelims run was a little, a little rough around their edges, but everybody survived. We didn't have any prop malfunctions. Um, we just, we got through it. And that was like check completed. We did it. We were all kind of assess damages. And then going into finals, have a little bit better uh, op uh, opportunity for us. So that was definitely a win. How did your performers feel coming off the floor? We'll start with the prelims performance. How'd they feel after that experience? I think everybody felt exactly, and the best way we could put it, I think everybody felt how they expected to feel. Okay. Like, because we knew going into prelims, like you weren't trying to set a low bar, but we just said like, hey, going into prelims, we just got to do our job and we know it's rusty. Like, let's just, let's just make it happen. So everybody got out of the gym and went, Yep, that was a little rough around the edges. We had some weird transitions, had some prop issues, but we got this. Okay. Right. So we got through it was, we execute, you know, executed the the prime thing for the day, which is get through the performance. Yep. And then, so then we'll it tighten it up and polish it from here. a little bit more survival mode than ideally, but but yeah, going into it after after prelims, everybody was able to kind of breathe a little bit more and then all right, now we can get ready for finals and now everybody feels a little more prepared. Excellent. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about was stamina for your performers, because first show was, uh, you know, two performances in a day, prelims, some downtime during critique and reset and dinner and all that stuff. And then a finals performance, uh, again, at the end of the day, how did they do in terms of stamina throughout the, the course of the day? Well, probably everybody did pretty well. Um, okay. we, as I think I mentioned last week, like the, because the SoCal scene, we were able to get rehearsed not rehearsal, but like a decent lot situation. It's easy to overextend the members and just get more reps because we can hear everything and we're outside and we we're in the sun, just basking out yeah. there. But um, it gets a little brutal, especially at, at Great Oak High School in Temecula, sometimes just baking in the sun and just repping. Yeah. It can be a little tough. So um, I definitely sensed after, it was after prelims, uh, the lot, when we finished ensemble, I was like, yo, everybody needs some water. I was like, yes, please. We need to get some water. We need to relax for a minute. Great. Cool. Let's take five before we walk to the gym. Let's take it easy. Let's try to go, like rebuild our stamina before we go in the gym. I know. I So I was at a regional this weekend too. I even felt it myself. Like, oh man, I these are long days and I've forgotten what this is like being on my feet to just go, go, go all day long. And so I know I was feeling it and I watched a number of groups in finals where you could just tell this was a long day for these students and hadn't you know have not yet built up that stamina necessary to get through those kinds of days so it's not something that was even on my radar going into the day and I'm sure that was the case for a lot of uh, ensembles too maybe 
if your ensemble has been to a region already, maybe that's something you've experienced, or if your first regional is coming up soon and it's a one day shot with prelims and finals, just think about that from a stamina perspective ahead of time. Uh, it's a huge gift we can give our students and maybe something that's not on all of our radars, especially because we're just kind of used to the cycle of this, but it's been a while since we've had some long days like that with our, with our percussion groups. Um, Eric, talk to me now about your staff. How did the staff at Gold feel at the end of the day collectively? If you could kind of give us um, a, a rundown of, of what the general vibes and impressions were. Overall, I think everybody came out of finals feeling very, very happy about things. Just Good. obviously just seeing the, the turnaround from prelims performance to finals performance. Um, it's still early. It was still our second performance of the season. Uh, but everybody just saw like, all right, now that we finished finals, you can see like glimpses of what this is going to be at the end of the season. Uh, and it's not like we didn't have hope, but like it brings like a new hope. You see it and you're like, oh, man, this is actually really cool. This is going to yeah. happen. So it, I think it reinvigorated a lot of us. Like we're all like, boom, let's go. Let's finish the show. Let's do this. Almost that renewed enthusiasm that Tony was talking about. We're like, you're just working, working, working. There's no payoff. Then you get to the first show and you're like, that's why we're doing this. That's right. This feels good. This is exciting. I want more of this. Uh, and so then you're hungry for whatever the next chapter is. Absolutely. Speaking of the next chapter, I'm wondering from both of you, what is next for your ensemble? Now that you've got the first performance under your belt, uh, I'm sure you've got a bunch of things that, that you want to work on performance wise, logistically, um, you know, production schedule, all that kind of stuff. Um, Tony, we'll, we'll start with you. What's next for Pedal High School? What are you thinking about here in the next coming weeks before we get together again? Well, we have uh, an even bigger daunting task because in 11 days, we have to have the show finished. And we also hope it's for a regional and a regional that we host, which is the Hattiesburg Regional. Um, so uh, not only... For me in the director's chair, am I, you know, trying to keep the production timeline on schedule, but I also have uh, an army of parents who haven't hosted a regional before. Mm -hmm. So I have to uh, coach them up on that while coaching up the students on how to be at a regional. This is what two a day is like and, you know, all of those things. So um, it, today... I had conflicting feelings where I was just so happy that we made this happen. But then I looked at the list of things that need to be done and it was much larger than the list we have done. And uh, there was a moment where I just kind of felt the walls closing in <laughs> and I was like, and, and then I read something that Tim Fairbanks actually posted on social media. He was talking about, you know, you know, like, this is our performers first time like he saw his performers without masks for the first time in the performance you know and that that there's something special about that and that we're all in the trenches here trying to get the kids back to just engage engaging with one another and then much larger than that engaging with an audience and making your personality so big that you can engage an entire arena of people mm -hmm. that that's a Herculean task. And then I, that, that gave me a little bit of pause and said, you know what, you know, this is, this is a huge thing. And I, I really need to put this in perspective and don't let that sense of panic that we all use in a normal year to help motivate us to, to move things along, to not allow me to serve my students in the way that I need to be serving them, you know, because yeah, yeah. if, if I approach them with my hair on fire, which, you know, if I had hair, my hair on fire, um, then then the, the, I, I could see where that would get into the law of diminishing returns. So um, that was kind of a serendipitous moment of reading that at the moment where I was, um, I needed a little motivation myself. Yep, very true, very true. Eric, how about for you and for gold? What's coming up next for you? Um, finish the show for sure. Uh, today's rehearsal, the day after the regional, uh, they played the last part of the show and they learned the drill for the last part of the show. Okay. So next weekend is put it all together and get the whole complete package on the floor. Excellent. 
Excellent. Um, we also, uh, we don't have a performance floor for our costumes and that's coming in this week. So it's also figuring out the actual production elements and actually making all this like, made it, make it actually look like a show. Yeah, start connecting all those dots together. Move it from framework to, you know, actual construction and the architect's it, vision. It still feels like. very hypothetical. Like you just yeah. see it and you're like, I, I see what this is supposed to be, but I'm just kind of using my imagination a little too much right now. Sure, sure. All right, well, gentlemen, I think we're going to sign off for tonight. I want to give you one more chance. If there's anything else you want to share tonight, I'll turn it over to either one of you. Um, and if not, if not, we'll sign off here. That one I'm thing I wanted, I wanted to say was that it was, it was kind of cool to get feedback from a adjudication panel. Like, this has all lived in my head. And for them to respond and react to the things that I just thought were just bare bones, for them to get things out of that and give feedback gave me an extra boost of confidence as well. Yeah, I'm so glad you shared that because that that affirmation, I think, is so important as you start to see the show take shape. That's amazing. And it's amazing to get the students out there on the floor. But when you have somebody with, you know, a discerning eye and a lot of expertise sitting in there, um, like diving into the show and looking for details and starting to give it to you back and say, oh, I love this. I love this. I'm picking up this. Um, it becomes all the more fulfilling for us as designers and educators and as as artists. Uh, and so, yeah, that's such a valuable experience. And I know, I mean, I don't want to speak, I'll, I'll speak on behalf of a lot of the judges because I get a chance to talk to a lot of them. I know they have also been equally chomping at the bit to get back in the stands, start seeing young people perform for them live again, and just be able to give back that energy that they're getting from ensembles. So uh, as much as we've wanted to bring our ensembles out to the floor, they've wanted to get back into that arena as well uh, and kind of hone their craft and, and you know, give great feedback. Uh, to all the groups. So it's this great um, complimentary cycle that we've got going on. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Tony. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to thank you both for joining us tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll check back in with each other here in a couple of weeks. Uh, thank you once again. Congratulations on your first shows of the season. And thanks for sharing a little bit of what it was like and what that experience was like. And, and we'll check back in with you soon. <laughs>